Hi, I think you're looking for me. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Past Gray here at a hotel in Denver, Colorado. Why? Well, for weeks I've been thinking about tumbleweed, and what started as mild curiosity turned into a lot of reading and a lot of writing, and hopefully a video Future Gray has finished and can put on the screen here now in editing. But for current me, it's still a work in progress, and as part of that, I came to the research lab here to talk to some of the world experts about why tumbleweed are so troublesome and the work these professors and their students do at the weed lab. I'm really excited. I've run out of people who will talk to me about tumbleweed in real life. These two accessions were very susceptible. This accession, so this is a separate location, totally resistant to the herbicide. This is the kind of stuff we do a lot of. Wow, that's an amazing photo. That's a photo I took. That is what happens when a mother plant tumbles in the wind, and then the farmer sprays, and all of the progeny from this mother plant carry a resistance gene. Let me just make, make sure I understand. If the farmer had not sprayed, there would be tumbleweed all over this photo, right? So, so what I'm seeing is the one plant that developed a resistance that survived the spray. If he had not sprayed, the whole field would have right. looked green. Let's just do a walking tour of the facility. Oh, by the way, before I forget, that coffee was fantastic. Was it? Yeah, that was great. Oh, yeah. On the tour, I was able to see my first tumble tots in person, and the various tortures weeds are put through at the lab to test their strengths and weaknesses in a variety of ways. Particularly cold tolerance that I got to experience firsthand. Whoa, it's cold. And it's crazy how tough weeds can be and how fast they can adapt. Here's an example where two weeds of the same species were sprayed with weed killer. The one on the left looks like it's doing better Better, but that's the one that's going to die because the weed on the right has a new mutation that lets it push all the weed killer into its outmost leaves to sacrifice them so the core can survive. This video was taken just before I arrived, so I got to see the survivor in person. Yeah. So this is the one that got sprayed. Yeah. These, and these it totally applied, survives. This applied to two. Right. And uh, he is susceptible. Okay, and those are susceptible, resistant. and those are the resistant yeah. ones. Now these are beautiful because it's normal growth. Yeah. All right, so oh. they all have these little cores mm -hmm. that survived. Yeah. And these... just the outside parts died. Yeah. God, that's nuts though that this is the one you showed me that got love that I thought was doomed. <laughs> yeah. I thought this was totally doomed, <laughs> and it's a, it's growing all up to be a big problem. 
and the tumbleweeds in particular are insanely adaptive. Talking to the experts all day about the terror of tumbleweed and their seemingly endless ways to survive, I wanted to know why is it that some weeds are so much better at being weeds? It was about the genome and just what it is that is fascinating about it. So, you know, genetic variation is the source of what natural selection acts on, and that's what enables species to respond to changes in climate over time. Imagine that area around Salt Lake where you are, the harshest environments on the planet, right? Mm -hmm. And yet tumbleweeds are thriving there. I don't know if you've seen one of these videos where they make a media plate that contains uh, different antibiotics in series, and you put the bacteria to start, and the, a mutation will happen for resistance, and they'll grow. Mm -hmm. Then they hit the next one, the mutation happens, and they grow, and, and so on. Because bacteria divide every 15, 20 minutes, you know, it's happening so much faster. We're kind of asking maybe why one species is a better weed than another one is that maybe they have a higher rate of generating all these sources of variation. And so extra copies, mutations in those copies. So that's what it is. It's not just that the, that the weed has a gene which can metabolize a herbicide, is that that weed has 50 copies of the same gene, which means that the plant has all of these places in which mutations can possibly occur that benefit it for processing like the different version of the herbicide. Yep, and allow it to survive. While still being able to keep all of the copies for the old version of the herbicide. So it doesn't have to just like mutate that one gene in the exact correct way. Yeah. Oh, wow, what a pain in the ass. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Our working hypothesis right now is that kochia has a genome that is more prone to the mistakes that generate gene duplications than other species. And that could potentially be really beneficial, especially for something that is invading a, a new place. What makes the difference between just dying off and going extinct versus propagating across a continent? Maybe their, their air repair machinery has lower fidelity, and this generates variation that can be adaptive. And then where it gets even a bit more provocative is, does it respond to stress? Is that a signal to the plant to relax its air repair mechanisms and right. actually generate more novel genetic variations? And we don't really know that you get adaptive variation from stressing the plant. We'd like to test it and find out. You say it's the provocative one, but like, I feel like I'm totally convinced by you. Right? <laughs> yeah. like listening, listening to you talk, I'm sitting here going, oh, how could that not be? Perfect, right? Like, that'd be so advantageous. We need to cool. Yeah. <laughs> so if we can't beat them, the question is, can we turn tumbleweed to our advantage? Because we've done the full genome sequence of kochia, we want to explore the genes in these successful, long-lasting weeds and see if there are traits that we can take out of the weeds and use them to improve soybeans or corn or cotton or whatever. If you had to pick the four things that I would pull out of a plant like kochia, so they're cold tolerant, they're extremely heat tolerant, they are also very drought tolerant. It tolerates saline soils, so salty soils. So if you could put those four traits together and introduce them into crop genomes, at, at the global level, I'm telling you, it would be worth billions and billions and billions of dollars. Looking at weeds as more than just something to kill and control and manage, mm -hmm. but as a novel source of unique genes that could be beneficial for food and fuel production at a global level. Well, the day is ending here, and it has totally been worth crossing the ocean for. My brain is completely full of tumbleweed talk, thanks to the team at the Colorado State Weed Lab. But I am exhausted. I've stayed on GMT, so it's much later for me here than it normally would be. So I <laughs> need to get back to the hotel to sleep and to process everything, to get up tomorrow morning, to drive to the airport, and to fly back home to make some adjustments to the script based on all of the conversations here so that future me can finish making that video. I think it's gonna be a good one. I'm really excited. For something like this, are, is, is a person manually putting each, yeah, each seed in? Yeah, one on one. One at a time? <laughs> yeah. Holy moly. Yeah. Mm -hmm.